we're living in the smile of God. I just can't ex ex stress enough that if you truly believe that, uh, it, it will it will radically transform your walk. That you believe that God is for you, He's not against you. If God's on your side and He's smiling over you, making His face shine on you, you're walking in His favor, His grace. It's it's like living in a bubble that gives you a confidence to uh, live life with your head up and with a smile. Now it's easy to know. God's smiling at you when life is smiling at you at the same time. But there can be a, a, a disconnect between the reality that God is smiling and life isn't smiling at you. Uh, you're, you're, you're experiencing storms and difficulties and trials and hardships and, 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 and it's in those storms, those times of darkness that, it, that we have to learn how to know what we can't see. You know, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, for we walk by faith, or in some translate it, we live by faith. Walk is just kind of a spiritual description uh, or a, a, a description of the spiritual life being a, a journey in one foot in front of the other. We walk by faith faith, not by sight. You know, in, the, in our Revelation series, you know, things are not what they seem. You know, there is a reality that this world gives us that's a distorted and often a, a completely opposite picture of the reality of what is going on in the heavenly realm. You know, I think of the, the prophet that was in the Old Testament that the enemy armies had come and circled all around them and and his servant was all freaked out. The prophet said, hey, don't get so freaked out. And he prayed for God to open his eyes and he saw angels, and the chariots of God, the warriors surrounding them. And he said, those that are for us are more than those that are against us. And so, but you can't see that in those times of life where it seems like God's angry at you. In the times in life where it seems like God's not paying attention to you, and certainly, he can't be smiling when you're going through the things that you are you're going through. And so I wanna to talk to you about how do you have a, a confidence that, that you have a God that's smiling when you're in the storms of life. When darkness, as the old song says, when darkness hides his shining face, I rest on his unchanging grace. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. So we wanna, wanna build our lives by faith on the character of who God is, not on the circumstances of what life is telling us. And I wanna use this as a backdrop in the book of Job uh, in the Old Testament. Uh, you know, he, he's, he's famous, he's the most famous sufferer other than Jesus in the entire Bible. And, and you know, Job paid a price in his life like no one else ever has besides Christ. To, to become a, an encouragement for people that are suffering. I'll never forget, uh, I got word, I was in seminary, and I got word from home, uh, I got a letter uh, from my dad saying that he and my mother were getting divorced after 32 years of marriage. <clears throat> and I went, it just rocked my world. I never knew they even had arguments. They, they really didn't much, because they'd, <clears throat> they'd drawn, a, a drifted apart, and died inside. And, and when I left and my brother was gone, they had nothing to hold them together. And the marriage blew up. But I never, if you said, Jamie, list the 100 worst things that could happen, that wouldn't even have been on the list because I never even thought of it as a possibility. Uh, and so I got that letter and it rocked my world. I was so angry. I mean, I was, you know, probably by then 20 years old uh, and just, you know, I was, I was a believer in Jesus. I was in seminary. I knew God's calling on my life. And, and so I, I, I just literally destroyed my room with a baseball bat. I just just destroyed my, I was living in a, in a dorm house with other seminary students. And, and I jumped in my car and I took off um, and I, I went camping. Uh, and I just I had, had this baseball bat with me and I, I just beat trees. And I'm just, I can't explain, 
it just helps you understand some of you that are either products of divorce and you've gone lived through it or, or your kids are living through it. And I know you don't, you don't mean to put that on them, but, but divorce puts things on kids. Even a, a young man, well-adjusted walking with Jesus, I was so angry and I, I dug this giant pit with my bare hands and I filled it with firewood and I got this big fire going and I just sat down and I just crying out, mad at God, why would he let it? I said, God, please talk to me. Now again, you have to be careful with what I call the hunt and dip method uh, of the Bible. You know, you close your eyes and you open it and you read. Now, but I, I'll often still to this day with caution, not Russian, not Bible roulette, but just sometimes I'll just say, Lord, just speak, give me a word. And I'll just open the Bible and I'll just start reading. Now, sometimes it can be like condemning verses of God saying, I'm going to destroy Babylon and all, you know. And so you got to have caution and discernment trying to listen. But anyway, my Bible fell open to the book of Job. And I had, I was aware of it, uh, but I'd never really read it. And I just read the first few chapters. And it was like a spiritual purging of my self-pity and my anger and, and, and Job is in the middle of the greatest storm and greater than any of us will ever go through. Uh, and, and I want to give you the backdrop like we did with Revelation. It pulled back the curtains to show a, a, a greater reality, a bigger reality, uh, 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 the reality of what's going on behind the scenes in God's ruling over the earth. So in Job 1 verse 6, it says, one day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came with him. And so somehow Satan still had access to the throne of God. He hadn't been thrown out fully. And, and we, we covered that. Uh, you, you covered that in the book of Revelation, just to, that he's hurled down to the earth. And there, there comes a point uh, in Christ's victory that he shuts him out. But at this point, he's still able to access the throne. He still comes before uh, God with the other angels. The Lord said to Satan, where do you come from? Not to God. Remember, God never asks a question and that he doesn't already know the answer, but he puts him on the spot to acknowledge. He said, oh, from roaming through the earth and going back and forth. And he said, oh, okay. Verse eight, the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Now that could be God picking a fight, which we'll see in a minute he does, or it could be God exposing him. He could have been like a vulture already soaring around Job because Job was a good dude. Job was a righteous man. And so God provokes, her. or God could be drawing attention to his son. God, God's gonna smile on Job. And most of us would say, mm, if that's what God's smile means, I'm not sure I want him to smile on me. And uh, uh, you know, it, 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 in verse 80, the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job, I wrote yes in my Bible. Now I'm not 100% certain, but his response tells me that God knew that he had been drooling over trying to get his teeth on one of God's special chosen children. Uh, there's no one on earth like him. Now, can, would you imagine God saying that about you? I mean, I, 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 I just that he would smile that big, that proud. And he said, there's no one on earth like he's blameless, upright, He's a man who fears me, God, and shuns evil. He's not saying he's perfect, but there's the, the, the surrendered life of honor to God, resisting evil, and, and God smiles and points him out and brags on him. That's my boy. Uh, this, is, this is the smile of approval, of, of just the, the, the grace of, of God on one of his children. And the devil says, yeah, sure he fears you, God, for nothing. Does he fear you for nothing? In other words, you're giving him stuff. You're doing stuff for him. You're, you're smiling on him. And your favor has prospered him. He's a wealthy man. He's got a great family. He's got a great wife. He's, he's, he's well-respected in the community. And, and he's just uh, 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 exhibit A of God's favor, his smiling favor. You know, when God smiles on us, it comes, it's not just some superficial, <laughs> it's the releasing of his favor. His smile is his favor. It's, it's that, 
that, that, that grace that comes in our lives that, that, that makes everything work. It's, it's kind of the, the, his goodness that's reflected from his face that's poured out on us in his blessing. And so uh, Job says, yeah, sure, he fears you. Sure, he's a, yeah, because look, look what do you get. Look what you give him all this stuff. And he said, verse 10, the devil says, have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? Now, I, I love that concept. I pray that regularly in my life. I pray for God's hedge. A, I want to stay in his hedge. It's a wall of protection. And I think in prayer, it's a powerful prayer to pray a hedge around your children, a hedge around your house. And I, I see the hedge as uh, not some literal building, but I see it as the, the, the warriors of God, that, that the angels of God, that the scriptures say, encamp around those that fear him. I think the hedge is the warrior with a sword that says, you don't come in here, you're trespassing. Now, I know we have a gun culture in America, and I'm not I'm going to make a political statement one way or another. But let me just tell you, your gun can't keep this guy out. But God's hedge can keep him at bay. The, the enemy cannot do what he just wants to do. He is on a leash. He's got limits that God gives him, and you can pray for those limits. Pray for that hedge around your life. So part of this, this awareness, the devil says, I can't get to him. You're protecting him. He's smiled over and he's blessed. He goes on to say in verse 10, you've blessed the work of his hands and his flocks and his herds and he's spread out all over the land. You stretch out your hand and strike everything he has and he'll curse you to your face. In other words, he'll look in that smile of yours and he'll curse you because you took away all the stuff that you had blessed him with. And the Lord said to Satan, very well, verse 12, that everything he has is in your hands, but on the man himself, don't lay a finger. And then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Now, if you read the rest of the chapter, it just gets worse and worse. And the, the, he, Job doesn't give up and he keeps worshiping God and the devil comes back and he, he takes all of his, kills all of his children. The devil wipes out all of his flocks and then he comes back and he says, sure, yeah, but if, he, if, he, if you touch his body, if you let his body get touched, he'll certainly curse you and die. And so he puts boils and sores and, and, and afflictions. The devil loves to afflict us with, 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 you know, with COVID. He loves to bring diseases. God's not the God of diseases. God's the healer of diseases. And so in all of this context, Job, now you got to remember, as someone has wisely said, Job didn't have the book of Job. Job didn't know that behind the scenes, there's a battle for his soul. Job didn't know that his God was smiling at him because he's going to go on to pray to die. He's going to wish he never lived, was never born. He, is, he just gets in such a point of despair. And then his friends show up and, and, and they try to give him counsel, but it's, 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 they misrepresent God and they just end up hurting him more. And, and it's just a, it, and it gets hard to follow in, the, in the, the, the middle of the book. It's very poetic and, and you gotta pay attention to who's talking and Job's in this battle and not knowing that in the dark cloud on the other side, he's got a smiling God, but it didn't feel like it. It didn't seem like it. It didn't look like it. it didn't sound like it. When you buried your children, you can't conceive that you have a God that loves you and he's a smiling God. But see, that's where faith has to interrupt or break through the, the seemingness of what life can tell you. See, when you don't walk by faith and you walk by sight, the opposite of 2 Corinthians 5, you walk by what your circumstances tell you. You get up and if, if you get, uh, you know, something good happens, then, well, God must love you. Something bad happens, God's probably mad at you. Uh, you know, and life gets unfair real quick. Life gets hard. There's sickness and, and, and relational issues and financial issues. And it's very easily, easy to forget God is smiling. Now, God doesn't smile when we're in pain. 
God grieves with us in pain. He's not uh, somehow getting any pleasure out of what Job went through, but God smiles because he knows what's on the other side, that what he's going to bring in Job's life at the end of the book, when Job puts his hand over his mouth and says, who am I, God, to question you? And, and you know, uh, God prospers, blesses, heals, restores uh, double of all that he had been through. And then Job became the patron saint, if you will, of sufferers. That when people are suffering unjustly and harshly and life's like, Job is a, is a mentor, he's a counselor to say, and I love these words, wanna, wanna, just amazing, I wanna kinda, at verse 20 of chapter one, it says, after this, Job got up, this is after he lost his family, his kids were killed, and, and he gets up and he falls to the ground in worship. Don't miss that, verse 20. He worships. What do you do when darkness hides his smiling face? It says shining face in the, in the song, uh, uh, Christ the Solid Rock. But what do you do? You have to learn to worship. Worship will get your eyes off of everything and lift them on to the Lord. There's nothing more therapeutic and healing when it seems darkness has hid his shining face. You go to him and worship. And he says, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. And all this, Job did not sin, charging God wrongly. And boy, yeah, he didn't say, you're a hard God, you're a mean God, you're an... No, because faith gave him the, the, the confidence and the character of God. Let me just give you a couple good takeaways, because darkness will hide his smiling face. Uh, you, you're going to go through times where... It seems like God's a million miles away. He's not hearing your prayers. It doesn't make a difference in your faith. And, and, and it seems like God's against you. Uh, and the enemy loves to fill in those unknown spots with negative and doubt and fear and discouragement. And, and so Job is a, is a beautiful picture of a God that smiles knowing what's coming even when we are in a time of darkness and despair because he sees redemption. He sees his hand is going to restore all to Job. And I think that lesson is, now remember Job didn't have the book of Job, we do. Job also didn't have the cross of Jesus to look at as a reminder that God came to take our sufferings on him that you look at life through the lens of the cross, it doesn't take away all your pain or your suffering and your hardship, and it doesn't, but it gives you that rainbow or that confidence that you can rest on his unchanging grace. On Christ the solid rock, the rock of who he is, the rock of what he did for us on that cross. Let me encourage you. You're gonna go through dark times. You're gonna go through storms and clouds block the, the sunlight of his smile, but it doesn't mean he stopped smiling. It doesn't mean that God is angry at you. It's okay to check your heart and check your soul and when you're going through hard times and say, Lord, is there something in me you're wanting to do or purify? But sometimes it's just plain an attack. It's a trial that you've got to go through, but you'll get through it that knowing that God is smiling over you. So let me encourage you that in the dark times, let the light that you can't see be true to you because you know who he is. And the enemy can never take a smile from God's face. He may have stolen your smile, he may steal my smile, but those smiles can be restored. As, as uh, the, the prayer uh, of David after he lost his smile, the enemy caused him to stumble, caused him to sin. He, David stepped out of the boundaries, the hedge of God, and, and he fell deeply in, in, in a moral act. And, 
and, and David was broken and in Psalm 51, he says, Lord, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. God didn't lose it. God still smiled, not because he was pleased with the bad things David did, but again, he smiles knowing the redemption that he's going to bring, the healing, the forgiveness. God smiles and David said, Lord, restore your joy to me. Put, put the smile back on my face. I think one of God's favorite things to do is restore smiles. I think God delights in, in, uh, in giving you that courage and faith to lift your head up, to, to say to your soul, oh my soul, why are you cast down? Stop frowning, stop pouting, and hope in God, smile again. Because when darkness hides his shining face, rest on his unchanging grace. Let's pray. Father, I pray if there's anybody in these groups that are just uh, feeling that, that lie that, that, that darkness had, had just somehow reflected that you're mad at them or that you've given up on them or that you've, yeah, Lord, I just pray that your, your smile would shine uh, in, in all of our groups, even through the dark clouds, that we'll know you're still smiling, not because we can see it with the natural, but we can know it by knowing who you are. Bless their time of sharing, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.